Hello guys, welcome back to Structural Geology course. Um, today we are dealing with the isotropic and anisotropic um, rocks. Um, so in Structural Geology, understanding the properties of rocks is important for interpreting geological phenomena, such as the movement of rocks and the formation of faults, and the distribution of stress. So two important properties of rocks are the isotropic and anisotropic. So isotropic rocks are those that have identical properties in all directions. This means that their physical and mechanical properties such as density, um, um, strength and stiffness are same in all directions. So um, these rocks are you know, defined by their uniform texture. And of course, they lack uh, the preferred orientation. So uh, they do not have um, 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 foliations and some lineations. Uh, they just have uh, the mineral grains that are randomly distributed. For example, um, um, if you look at the, the quartzite, the sandstone, the limestones, and the dollar um, um, stones, you'd agree with me that these rocks, they are not layered. They are not in the form of layers. So it means um, um, they, are, they have a uniform texture. They do not have a preferred orientation of um, a certain um, a minerals, all right? Um, um, and then, but when you're looking at anisotropic rocks, okay, they have got different properties in different directions. So this means their physical and mechanical properties vary depending on the orientation of the rock. So, um, so um, anisotropic minerals, they would therefore have, um, they would not have um, a, um, a uniform textures by the um, heterogeneous textures. And then, but now they also have what you call a preferred, the preferred orientation, such as the foliations um, um, uh, and lineations as mentioned previously. And then foliation, as mentioned in um, a lecture two, uh, of structural geology. Um, these are the development of parallel layers or bands of minerals or textures that is usually seen in, in the rock gneiss. And then lineation, the development of parallel lines or the fibers of minerals or textures. And then preferred orientation, it means that the alignment of minerals or crystals in a specific direction, depending on the principal stress. Okay, example of anisotropic minerals include the schist, the gneiss, phyllite, and myelonite. So if you can check these rocks, they've got um, preferred orientations and they've got lineations, they've got um, foliations as well. All right, so if um, we are looking um, at these two types of rocks, we are looking at the, um, the quartzite and then um, we're looking at also the nice and then we're asking ourselves, um, um, why is the quartzite um, isotropic and, and, and why? And then why also the nice is what you call an anisotropic? I mean, we just, we don't have, just have to agree with um, everything, but we need to ask ourselves, we need to question ourselves, why is that the, ca the case, right? So with um, 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 quartzite, Look at this um, um, uh, this rock. So it means if you are measuring it or you are observing it in this way and also in that way, you see the same um, physical and mechanical properties. You observe the same physical and mechanical properties. So it means it does not matter if the property is measured in all directions. It does not matter if the property is measured in all directions. It, the, 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 then they would all appear more or less the same, irrespective of the direction of measurement, which is why quartzite is what you call the isotropic, because they possess the same physical and mechanical properties. Right? Um, but now, if we are looking at, um, um, at, at this nice yeah, uh, uh, as an, an isotropic, if you measure from at the um, um, from uh, the bottom to the top, you'd agree with me that you see these bands, you know, these bands of um, um, felsic and uh, mafic materials, felsic, mafic, um, felsic, mafic, felsic, mafic, these blacks are mafic. So we, we see the, 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 the um, different layers. So you'd agree with me that if um, you measure from the bottom to the top, you will encounter different layers. You will encounter different layers as you go up, okay? But if you were to um, measure from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, 
you are gonna move along the same layer with the same mineral properties, same physical and chemical mechanical properties. Okay, so 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 now it means from here to there you are looking at um iso uh, isotropic, and then but now from there to there you are looking at an isotropic. All right, so um um that's why. Now these um anisotropic materials they depend on the direction um of 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 observation. If you're observing from the top to the bottom, you'll see um heterogeneity. But if you have um you are observing um from left to the right, then you're gonna see um the homogeneity. So all these things they depend now on the uh, direction. Okay, so um which is why they are anisotropic materials or they are anisotropic rocks. So yes, so as structural geologists, when you're in the field, remember structural geologists, they need to do field observation. You must be understanding all these properties so that um, you come up with the, the better um, conclusion. So why these um, properties are very important um, for a structural geologist? Yeah, well, um, for interpretation of geological structures and for stress analysis and for seismic interpretation, hydrocarbon exploration, and of course, the geotechnical engineering. In terms of the interpretation of geological structures and isotropic rocks can provide valuable information about the tectonic history and the deformation process that has um, that have affected the area for example the presence of foliation or lineation can indicate the direction of a compression or shear i mean if we um, I'm looking at uh, uh, this uh, foliated rock that is uh, such as nice. Um, and then you'd agree with me that um, initially we had uh, the uh, the grains that um, that were randomly distributed, and then and then and then in this case we had the stress coming from the top. And from the uh, the bottom now making now sure that uh, these things they are aligned okay they are aligned so it means now this layering this foliation it's uh, happening perpendicular to the principal stress so can now uh, let's see that you understand um 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 the the direction of stress by just looking at these kind of rocks or by understanding these properties called anisotropic um in uh, uh, anisotropic um in and in, in 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 rocks so stress analysis anisotropic rocks can respond differently to stress depending on the orientation of the rock right and then this can affect the behavior of faults and fractures and ultimately influence the distribution of stress within a region okay um, in terms of seismic interpretation, in seismic exploration, anisotropic rocks can affect uh, the propagation of um, seismic waves, which can impact the accuracy of seismic data interpretation. I mean, um, um, the, the seismic um, um, method, it depends on uh, the um, physical and mechanical uh, 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 properties. For example, let's check the physical properties such as the density. The rocks that, um, um, if the rocks below the surface of the earth, they're denser and they are stiff, they are rigid. It means they're not well, they're not fractured. It means now the seismic wave will travel fast and then and then it will be, uh, it, will, it, it will arrive at the geophone um, at a very um, um, short period of time. But now if the rocks are fractured, it means now, um, 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 if the rocks are fragile, then it will take time um, for this, the, the seismic velocity will take time to arrive at the, at the, at the, at the geophones, all right? So um, by so doing, we already understand that now uh, the physical and, and, and mechanical properties are, um, are, are different in all directions, all right? Remember, don't forget that an isotropic um, have different properties in different directions, okay? Meaning that their physical and mechanical properties, uh, they vary depending on the orientation of the rock. So it means um, 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 if the uh, mechanical and physical properties, they, uh, they vary, uh, 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 you can understand the, um, the seismic data. Now, hydrocarbon uh, uh, exploration, anisotropic rocks can influence the uh, uh, migration um, and accumulation of hydrocarbons in, in, in sedimentary basins. Understanding the isotropy or anisotropy of rocks can help identify potential traps and reservoirs. I mean, if we've got um, some um, 
um, synclinal structures and um, as a synclinal and anti-synclinal structures. Uh, um, these are the folds. Actually, the folds um, um, because they've got some threads. Um, uh, um, are the potential areas through which we can find um, what you call the hydrocarbons, such as oils, uh, oil and gases. All right. Yes. So this is um, uh, um, uh, can be. Uh, uh, explored uh, with the help of a structural geology who understand um, uh, and the difference between isotropic and, isotro and, and isotropic minerals, okay, not minerals, but um, um, rocks. Now, the geotechnical engineering, isotropic rocks can affect the behavior of foundations and excavation in civil engine, uh, engineering projects. Understanding the properties of rocks in, is essential for designing safe and stable fractures. I mean, for example, um, uh, um, again, you example with the seismic data uh, that um, the rocks that are fractured the seismic data it will take time um, 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 to arrive at the geophone so by uh, when we uh, measure the arrival time of seismic wave we know definitely that the rocks below the surface of the earth they are fractured or they are rigid, they are not rigid um, 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 they are unstable therefore it means that, that area that side is not conducive um, um, uh, for the construction of um, you know large buildings buildings, you know, or the tall buildings and malls and many other things. So which is why now um, understanding the anisotropic materials uh, or uh, the, this, uh, or understanding the difference between isotropy and anisotropy in, uh, in structural geology would help the structural geologist um, to also um, understand the 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 areas which are safe enough for uh, 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 for you know for building some tall buildings and you know some malls, okay. So um, yeah, so this brings us to the end of uh, the structural uh, uh, geology course um, third lecture. So the fourth lecture we are gonna look into the um, the heterogeneity and the homogeneity of, of rocks. See you on the other side. Cheers.